There we go. Uh, I have this one update on my Mac that I don't think I'll ever do, just because I keep forgetting about it. Is it an upgrade to Monterey? <laughs> no. Although it still keeps uh, mentioning that, hey man, why don't you upgrade to Monterey? It's got all these cool features. And I'm like, hey man, why don't you support my fucking Mac with Monterey? Yeah, bitch. So I can get at least some of those features because there are features that uh, Big Sur is supposed to have that uh, I don't have because my computer doesn't support them. Sorry, anyway. sorry. Like Sidecar would be cool, but it doesn't support it. Sidecar is actually pretty cool. Yep, I'm sure it is. I'd love to try it, but I can't unless I jailbreak something. There was like a way to do it. I looked it up, but I don't. It, it was is involved and it required doing stuff, and I just was like, nah. You're like, mm, you know what? No, that's more intense than than I really do. I really need to use my iPad as a extra screen. Probably not. The experience is probably not going to be great. Probably not. Um, did I not? What have you been up to this week? Man, fucking work, dude. Right? Work is just awful. Fuck, man. For the second time now, our internet is out. Like, completely out. What? At the DVC. Well, I shouldn't say completely out. Like, only half of the services department has internet. Like, Ethernet and Wi-Fi. And it happens to be the uh, PC half that is out. The one that actually fucking needs it? Exactly. That happened on Tuesday when I was gone. Uh, continued into yesterday when I was there. And so it'll probably still be out today because... You know, you put up tickets for these things, and they're like, level one is just like, can you just, like, you know, unplug the server and plug it back in? It's like, motherfucker, I don't even know what, where it is that you're telling me to go. Yeah. And then you just want me to just, like, unplug stuff and plug it back in, like a server rack, you know? Probably not the best idea. Probably not the best idea. Okay, well, we'll just uh, upgrade this to level two. Yeah, no Thanks. Shit. No shit, dick Thanks. shit. Can't you just have somebody from corporate IT actually take a look at this? Because, you know, this is kind of important, but whatever. Nah, homie. Apparently not. Whatever. So, yeah, we're back to, to pretty much just sitting around, not really being able to do anything because we have no internet. So, it's fun. Not really. Yeah. Not really at all. So, that's been my experiences at work for the past couple of days. Well, that seems like a lot of... Super fun. Yeah, no, not really. Not really at all. Not a lot in the news this uh, week, no as we shit. have the past couple of weeks. I don't know what it is. It's just, there's nothing, really. I got a couple of articles here. One talking about uh, Dune Part 2. Hell yeah, what's up? Uh, it was basically that, and it's something that we may have talked about, but I have totally forgotten about, but uh, there is a HBO Max show that uh, has withstood the mass cancellations. The axing? That, uh, had, that had uh, axings, yeah, that had uh, happened over the past couple of weeks. Uh, and it's doing the sisterhood. It's supposed to tie into the movies. Uh, it has survived, apparently. So they're still working on the story, and I I don't remember the whole article here, but uh, I believe it's supposed to come out before the part two comes out. It's like a bridges the two stories. It makes sense because there's a lot of... Or no, it's, it's supposed to be expected to be a prequel to the new Dune movies. Yeah, okay. That's what it is. I mean, it makes sense. There's got a lot of back lore and stuff that we don't get in the first movie that they probably won't want to use in the second movie due to, I mean, the first movie is what, three hours long or some nonsense? Yeah, but it's three really good hours. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm wondering if that's what they're going to do is they're going to use that to build the lore of the 
of the world or universe or whatever that is. That's probably it. I yeah. think isn't uh, isn't Sisterhood or something along those lines one of the many books that Herbert wrote about Dune? Is that one of his or is that one of the 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 kids? The kids maybe. I'm, I'm scanning through the article and I, I can't uh, find a clear answer here. Dune franchise. Because I know there's just like a b- bazillion fucking novels. Yeah. that take place in this world. And you're right, I forgot that the kid wrote more. Where, no, that where, that basically talked about what the... I... There we go. Uh, Dune, Dune Messiah... Um, God Emperor of Dune. Uh, Heretics of Dune. Uh, Chapter House Dune. Were all the ones he wrote. And then Brian and Kevin J. Anderson. So Brian uh, Herbert. uh, Wrote... A Prelude to Dune, Dune House of Trades, Dune House Harkonnen, Dune House uh, Corino, Legends of Dune, a shit ton of Dune books, uh, Hunters of Dune, Sandworms of Dune, Heroes of Dune, a lot of Dune in this. You guys probably just could put Dune at the beginning and said something afterwards, but whatever. Uh, shit ton of short stories. There are so many Dune books. I told you. So it's sounding like that this is its own property, but obviously it's going to borrow heavily from all those other works. Like you said, most likely just setting up the uh, the world and the lore of Dune. Yeah. Which is cool. I'm down for it. Especially if it looks anything like the movie. Good for sure. That'd good, be awesome. Good God. Why is that so loud? Is that you or me? You. No. Well, stop texting. Sorry. I don't know why it's actually so loud. Uh, volume down. I don't uh, know. I don't know. Anyway. It doesn't matter. Ding. Fries Ding. Are done. Fries are done. Ding. Fries are done. <laughs> That's not the button I wanted to hit. Um, more weird news. Oh. I don't know why it's been this thing. Over the past week, it's something that we, we've talked about and kind of covered uh, over the past couple of weeks. There's just, just huge talk of Tomb Raider, the next Tomb Raider film, for some reason. It's so weird to me to have a, a franchise that has been relatively mediocre when, when you had Angelina Jolie do it. They're not great films. They're not necessarily bad films. Then they rebooted it with the uh, uh, Alicia Vic- Vikander. Yeah, Vikander. Uh, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Again, it's not the most, it's not the greatest film ever, but it, it was a, it was a nice reboot, something to follow more in line with what the games were, do, were doing, rebooting Laura Croft and making her more realistic. Uh, but ever since the rights moved over to, uh, actually, did they say who finally bought them? I can't remember. It was weeks ago that we talked about it. But they people have just been like articles, writing articles about throwing out who should play the next uh, Laura Croft. Uh, the newest one is Audrey Plaza uh, wants to take it up. Okay, I mean, yeah, whatever. And that's just the short of it. But it's just weird to me that there has been so much talk about the next Tomb Raider and these actresses that want to play uh, player. Uh, Laura Croft. I just don't understand it. Why it's why it's such seemingly a, a thing that's blowing up right now. Because we talked about it on the podcast, and now everyone's talking about it. Oh, is that it? You're welcome, world. You're welcome. Please make a good Tomb Raider, because I do like the uh, the reboot series. Yeah. That was basically it for that. I just don't understand why it's suddenly a big thing. 
I don't know, man. It's it's uh, it's weird. It's one of those things where like you you talk about it, so then like all of a sudden the algorithms start just pushing that shit towards you, and so Probably. maybe you know. It's like he clicked on that once. Better show him like ten or twenty different articles about this. Yeah, it's like they that could be it. They didn't. I'm just they didn't, uh, falling uh, victim to the to the algorithm. Yeah, man. It's how we world the world works now. So you know. But it's just weird, like, sometimes that happens where, like, I think of something and then the zeitgeist just kind of filters in that shit around me. I'm like, wait a minute, what? Why Why are y'all just giving this to me now? Like, why do I have to wait for my brain to think of it first before you started sending it my way? Right. Get out of my head. Get out of my algorithm. Uh, the final thing that I, I really had for today, something I, again, we may have talked about, but I don't we're talking about is that uh amazon uh is set to or in the middle of making a fallout tv series we briefly talked about it because they uh a month ago when they first announced announced it i I can't talk apparently this morning um yeah and it's weird too because like it's um there's all these weird like we're in a weird transition of like uh, adaptations of stuff that aren't comic books. Um, one of them is video game stuff. Like there's the Last of Us uh, show that's coming out on uh, on HBO soonish, which is wild. Um, mm-hmm. There's still rumors of uh, the Gears of War something other happening with it. Uh, Fallout obviously uh, is there. Halo obviously just uh, wrapped up, uh, and they're currently making season two. Apparently, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's just weird because like it's like when you think Fallout, you're like actually that makes sense to make a TV show out of that. It does. It it didn't dawn on me until that art like we I read something about it a while ago, where it just you look at it, you're like, you know what? Yeah, yeah, actually that would be pretty cool source material actually to do and mm-hmm. I think I would enjoy that um and there's a lot there's a lot you could do with it I mean obviously you could you know it's uh it's kind of like a in a way a walking dead type uh exactly property what I was thinking. um where it could be borderlines like sort of sci-fi because of the retro technology thing but like MacGyverish in a way where like the like the people whoever if they focus on one person or a group of people like have to cobble together uh, weapons and 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 make make makeshift uh, uh, communities or whatever or strongholds or what you want to call it um, and then there's like the obviously the mutated freaks and the animals and all the other stuff that are out there and the the number one you know obviously the bad guy uh, from Walking Dead always is the other people. Uh, so that sort of thing is interesting because like you you look at it you're like yeah no Fallout is exactly that because if you look at all the Fallout games, including seventy six, um, it's literally just a survival in this new fucked up reality. Um, so it's interesting to see, uh, and, and uh, did they announce it? Did they say anything more about it? Like if there's anybody attached to it or? No, the only thing that. The, the reason for the article coming uh, came up is because uh, photos of the sets leaked. Uh, and unfortunately, it looks like by now it, it's been pulled due to copyright. There is one image that a uh, guy on Twitter has, and I will send it your way. It, there's not really a whole lot to to show on it. It just shows what looks like a run, rundown uh, supermarket. Although the guy who posted it on Twitter uh, says, I drove past the old shop right on uh hillian today and at the light thought damn that went downhill fast turns out they're filming the fallout tv series there and it's been purposely decayed unlike every other strip mall uh on staten island uh but yeah the other one uh that showed uh looks like probably four probably maybe even more pictures uh of the the set have been taken down by now hmm I mean that's cool. I mean I I, I like the fact because uh, I dug almost all the Fallout games except for seventy six. Yeah, seventy six is. I mean I've only played the first person shooter 
Fallout games. I've never played the the point and click uh, adventure games from way back in the day. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, I've played them all with the exception of seventy six as well. And I've, I've, like you said, I've enjoyed them all. It'll be interesting to see if they're following some sort of uh, storyline from one of the games, or if they're just making their own stuff. They could easily just make their own thing and do whatever they want with it. Yeah. Uh, I just hope that you would see like uh, group mainstays that you've seen in a lot of the the, the games, such as the uh, uh, not the combine. What the fuck are they? Oh, um, the big guy, the guys in the middle suits. Yeah, just... the Brother of Steel. Brotherhood of Steel. Yeah. I was like, what is it called? You, you when you said that, I was like, that does sound awesome. What is that called? Brotherhood yeah, of Steel. Right? Yeah. Uh, and then some other groups that you that you might have in there, like the depending on where it's set, whether it's like the Philadelphia or or uh, what was it Nevada or California uh, yeah. for the other ones. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in, in seeing this and uh, hopefully enjoying it. It's funny that it does look like every other rundown mall you ever see. It really does, especially in some areas that are more like uh, you get a lot of rainfall. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that obviously stands out is the vehicles because they're very uh, 50s-ish. 1950s, yeah. That's fucking rad. That might get loud. Okay, I like let's... how it's called the Super Duper Mart. Yeah. That's because that's one of my favorite things about Fallout is like the the names of shit, like Nuka-Cola and all that fun stuff. And uh, it'd just be interesting to see how they tie... Because obviously there's game mechanics that like have story-related stuff in them, like the Rataway right mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how they kind of play with that. Um, and I would like it to be more tongue in cheek than overly serious. I think like walking dead is, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause there's a bit of humor involved, uh, in, in the fallout franchise. Um, a lot of it is again, again, game mechanic stuff with like the, the upgrades you you get to your character and stuff like that, which obviously would be a hard thing to do in a narrative story. Um, but you know, as long as they leave, the humor in it, I think it'd be pretty fun to, to, to get into. Yeah. So that's basically all I had for this week. Yeah, man, there's uh, not much going on. Speaking of Nuka Cola though, yes. uh, that Coke that, uh, we found. Yeah. Which the, one, uh, the, the, what? the, you found both, right? The marshmallow one and the dream, Dream, Dreamland? Dream Is it Dreamland? Yeah, whatever that one's called. I think it's Dreamland. Um, where did you find those, but the individuals? So the uh, the marshmallow one, which, by the way, Mike is right. I, I remember reading a lot of this uh, before we even found the, the can of it, is that a lot of people were expecting it to be marshmallow flavored, but yeah. it's actually marshmallow, I, like, what is it, the DJ? I can't yeah. remember what he's he a does. DJ. Yeah, he's a DJ, DJ producer, what do you want to call him, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he mixed his his own favorite flavors together, which were watermelon. Uh, there was a couple in there, which is, it, it wasn't bad. Uh, you could, it was weird that you could actually pick out the flavors, the individual flavors, but they weren't that strong. Like I was almost expecting more of like a candied flavor of each of those of the of the the flavors, but it's it was much more subdued. You you got more of the flavor of the Coke rather than hmm. than the flavor of the actual watermelon or or whatever else the flavor was was supposed to be in there. Uh, so that one, funny enough, uh, we went to Target to go pick something up uh, before we went to, over to our parents' house, and uh, we were about to check out, and I was like, oh shit. We should check to see if they have that Coke Dreamland here. It, it should have just released this week, like literally the week of recording. I think it was supposed to release on the 15th. Yeah, it's supposed to be Monday. Uh, so we we take a quick glance through all of the, uh, the refrigerators up front, couldn't find it, and we walked back over to the, uh, to the drink section that they have at our local Target. They didn't have anything in the, in the, the actual uh, refrigerator section in the back. And then they didn't have anything in the the soda aisle, so we were like, "Fuck, okay, well, we're just gonna go check out." We're passing by the refrigerators in the front, and my brother stops and walks over and looks, and he goes, "Hey, what the, what's this?" And it was the marshmallow, just mixed in with the rest of the uh, the Coke products in the front, 
and he only recognized he only thought to look because it looked like a weird energy drink and he was looking for maybe something that you know had some caffeine in it in it and i was like oh shit that's that marshmallow stuff i totally forgot about uh it doesn't taste like marshmallow but it is uh but it's, it's some other flavors so we bought that and that was the first picture that i sent you so that can be found over at target at least in the refrigerator the refrigerators up front um they didn't have a whole lot but that's where we found it the dream world stuff uh was over at fry's my brother actually had to go into fry's to go shopping and he came back with it so they have the individual 20 ounces at fry's that shit was actually good uh you really got a flavor of the peach in there with a nice mixture of the flavor of the coke and that was actually really good so far that's been i'd have to say that's my favorite of all the flavors i, I missed out on the pixel flavor i don't know if you can still get it anywhere but at least when they announced it and they released it i didn't see it anywhere of course i don't really go out a whole lot of places but I would check every once in a while on uh, like Fry's app because they will post that stuff on Fry's app, obviously to sell. And uh, I never saw that stuff. Uh, but yeah, so Target for the marshmallow, and then Fry's for the Dream World, Dreamland, whatever it is, Dream World. Maybe it's Dream World. It might be Dream World. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, we were looking for it because uh, they were supposed to be out this week, both of them. So, uh, but we. Uh, we haven't yet to find them because um, Walmart was supposed to, like, was advertising the Dream World one. Yeah, it is Dream World. Yeah, so we were like, oh, and then like, you you send that, those pictures, and I was like, fuck, the guy who doesn't go to actual stores fucking finds them, and I can't get them, and I go to fucking every store. Yeah, right. Horse shit. Go to every store all the time. Bunch of horse shit. But if it was found in a Halloween section, I would have found it. Oh, you would have. Like if it were mixed with squishmallows. Oh my god. Squishmallows and Coke. Ew. Well, I'm not saying like like they're together. I'm just saying they're in the same area. Oh, okay, that's fine. But that's... I would say definitely try the, the the marshmallow one, it's something to try. It's not great. It it's not bad. It's just not not great. <laughs> not great. Uh but that uh the Dream World one, if you like peach which I do. It's really good. I think it's really good. Yeah, someone online said it was more of a uh, less of a candy-ish peach, more of like an actual peach, like juice yes. flavor. Yes. So it wasn't like overbearingly like sweet and things like that. No, not like I was expecting. Like I said, for the the marshmallow, marshmallow one, the marshmallow one would have ha- would have lent. Uh, better if it was more like candied watermelon candied whatever the other flavors were it would have made those flavors more distinct and stand out more where i, I felt like i got more of the coke taste there but the peach tasted like peach it didn't taste like a candied peach like you said or anything like that so you got a nice mix of the peach and the coke flavor really good now i haven't tried the the coke zero because i think they also released it in coke zero form yeah it's and coke zero is great, but it does have like a bit of a different taste to it. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see what peach and Coke Zero taste like. But actual Coke and peach tastes really good. Hmm. Yeah, I was interested in that one because we obviously they didn't announce what it was, and then it obviously came out, and people are like, "Oh, it's peach." Um, and people were talking about it. I was like, "I want to try it now, please." No, cool. I can't you find definitely it. Definitely should. Yeah, we didn't try, we only tried, like, I think we tried a QT and then we tried a Walgreens to see if it just popped in one of those. Sometimes we find those weird ones there, mm-hmm. but we did not find them. Just got to go to the actual stores and find it in fries and shit. Right, which is weird because I know, like, Best Buy stole, sold the uh, Starlight flavor. Yeah. As well, so I, I don't, I don't know, is Starlight still even available? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, at some places you can still find it. Like a, lot of fri- a lot of times at Fry's you'll see boxes of it. Because we did see... Actually, I was going to say, we found the Dream World one at uh, at Fry's, but it was just boxes. I didn't want to buy a box of it in case it was terrible. Exactly. Like, I don't want to buy uh, a six-pack of the of any of these flavors unless... you know, Or 
unless I really like them, I guess, but I don't really buy soda uh, anyway. But uh, yeah, like if I would have just found a, I, you know, truthfully, if I would have found a six pack of them, I probably still would have bought it because I know that I would want to try it. My brother would want to try it. You would want to try it. Mike would want to try it if I ever see him. Paige would want to try it, you know. So I, I could hand it out and, and be done with a six pack pretty quickly. But you're right. Like I don't want to make an investment into something that I don't know exactly if it's going to taste well, taste good or not. Yeah. But if you ever come across the pixels, I want to try it. Uh, if I find uh, it, man, I will, uh, I will get some. Yeah. Even if it's like, even if it's a six pack or, or something like that, I'll, I'll pay for the whole thing and then just everybody can have some. I will do my best to keep an eyeball feel for it. Um, there was something and I did not save it apparently. Um, nope. Don't know. Don't know what it was. I had a weird and long night, so, you know, I had stuff and I was doing things, and then apparently I never saved it anywhere. Oh, I know what it was. Hold on. Hold up. I'm holding up because I'm reading about uh, Coca-Cola Pixel. Apparently there's only 25,000 twin packs released. Is oh, that really? what I'm reading, right? Never get a can of that stuff at that that's correct uh the metaverse strikes again coke is releasing coca-cola sugar or coca-cola zero sugar bite a new oh new limited edition pixel flavored soda is that coke's new pixel flavored soda goes on sale today but it's through its creations website and says that less than twenty five thousand twin packs will be made available well, that's probably gone by now then. Go into Coca-Cola's creation websites. You find what you're looking for? Yeah. Uh, so uh, the name Wolfgang Peterson, does that sound familiar to you? Yeah. It does sound familiar? Oh, it does the name Wolf Peterson sound familiar? Wolfgang Peterson. Well, I mean, it... it no. Okay. No, it doesn't. So he passed away just recently. Okay. Rip. Uh, but he is uh, very rooted in my childhood uh, and in movie watching. Uh, and probably years too, you just don't know the name. Uh, yeah. But I'll throw out a couple titles of movies he made, and I'll see if anyone's sparking interest in you. Okay. Das Boot. Das Boot. That. I, I mean, that sounds familiar, but Das Boot is also, uh, like, the boot in German, isn't it? Yep. It refers to a certain thing. Like, uh, uh, fuck, what is that? It's uh, Oktoberfest, the, the drinking of the, the boot. <laughs> in in Beer Fest, yeah. In Beer Fest, yeah. Uh, it's, actually oh, a beer fest. it's actually a submarine reference uh, uh, from Germany. Um, but, yeah, it's a movie, one of the best submarine movies ever made, by the way, uh, called Das Boot. Uh Highly recommend watching if you haven't seen it. Okay. Uh, next up, the Never Ending Story. Okay, I, I've seen the Never Ending Story. Yeah. Wrote and directed that. Uh, he he okay. directed a movie called Enemy Mine. Nope. Uh, you might know. I don't know if you. I don't know if you've ever actually seen it or not. Um, it's a 1985 uh, American uh, science fiction action film. Um, but it it's it it has Dennis Quaid and Lewis Gossett Jr. in it. If that sparks any memories. Okay, no, cool. Uh, in the Line of Fire. Yeah, I, I've heard of In the Line of Fire. I, I'm not sure if I've ever actually seen it. Yep, that's a good one too. Um, Outbreak. Wait, like the. Yeah, that that's with. Uh... Yeah, I've seen it. A ton of people. I've seen it. Yep. Uh, Air Force One. Harrison Ford? Yep. Okay, I love that movie. The Perfect Storm? Uh, I actually own that movie. It's an enjoyable movie. Troy? It's a good-ish movie. <laughs> Poseidon, which is the remake of the Poseidon Adventure. Uh, okay, I was going to say, yeah, that's the remake of the, the Poseidon Adventure with the boat thing. No, I haven't seen the either yeah. of them, the original one with the remake. 
Hunt. So those are the ones that that they pop up. Uh, and obviously, uh, you know, Never Ending Story was a huge movie for my childhood. Uh, but yeah, he recently passed away, uh, unfortunately. That sucks. Yeah. So I thought that was a, a, a cool little run down the uh, the the memory banks of of movies that you often you know of but you don't realize are all made by the same person. Yeah. And he's got a lot of other movies I've never seen uh, before, um, but because um, they're, they're in German. Um, but, uh, you know, besides that little fact, uh, I thought it was a, a, a interesting thing, but also like a kind of a sad thing, too, because like he's awesome and now he's he's gone forever. Yeah, that sucks. It always sucks. Yep. But you should check out Enemy Mind, Joe. Uh, I think you'd enjoy that movie. Older sci-fi movie. Enemy Mine? Enemy Mine, yeah. Uh, so, M-I-N-E. I think you've, you've probably noticed it before. You pro- you may have seen it, like, on TV, but I don't know if you've ever actually seen it, seen it. Yeah. Um, Based on a book or something uh, that I've never read. I do know it was, it was based on a book, though. Um, oh, novella. Sorry. Sorry. Novella. My bad. Um... But uh, yeah, I know it's a very interesting uh, sci-fi movie that uh, has some pretty. Uh, uh, it's a it's a pretty good movie, if you ask me. Maybe cool. maybe I'm wrong. If I remember, I'll check it out sometime. Uh, if I remember, like all the times that I try and remember to watch stuff that you told me to watch, yeah, I just never get around to it because I haven't even still watched the stuff that I'm trying to watch right now. Speaking of things watching now. Um, yeah. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? No. No, is it? I have made it to episode five of The Sandman. Okay. All right. Did Like when you say you made it to it, like you watched it? Uh, so next? the last episode that I watched was literally the uh, the the battle with Lucifer, the okay. whatever, the contest with Lucifer. That was the last episode I watched. All right. So you're right there. Yeah. So that, that was like episode four or five. I can't remember. It was four, yeah, because it, it leads up to to Doctor D's uh, escape. Doctor D. Uh that's John D's name uh, in the comic book. Yeah, he escaped. Uh so the, yeah, the last episode. Oh wait, no. Okay, so yeah, he was escaping at the same time. Yeah. No, the last episode that I, that I watched, never mind, uh, was when Dream takes back uh, the Ruby. Oh, she so didn't watch the it, diner scene. Yeah, so I okay. watched the diner scene. Yeah, okay. I was thinking that was happening at the same time as the, um, as, as the uh, the the verbal battle with Lucifer. But no, that was the next episode, wasn't it? Yep. Where I was just focusing on the diner. Yeah. Yep, and it was awesome. It was really good. I I thought it was bloodier in the comics. It, so yeah, that's the one thing that I actually read an article about uh this morning or last night or whenever I fucking read it where they were co- talking about the the differences in that in the those two cuz like in the comic book it's it's more uh it's more gory uh and and uh and more violent I guess you could say more horrorish. I mean this is pretty horror based but like the comic book is very very horror based um and then the uh uh the show episode or actually not the show but the episode was more focused on the uh the lives and the sex aspect of it um which obviously like interwove different story elements to lead thing lead people to different things um and obviously that happens but it's it's more uh um of a focal point for the episode than it is the comic book, but in the comic book is more of the horror part, but also John D in the comic is actually more of a desiccated human being than he is a human, a normal looking old guy who's just kind of be kind of creepy. Um, so obviously that was a, that was a big difference too, but yeah, no, that episode was fantastic. And I was shockingly surprised how well they did with it. Cause I could have, they could have easily, I mean, obviously Neil was part was was is heavily in, involved in this uh, adaptation, uh, being in the writers' room and, and being executive producer and things like that. Um, so I'm glad that like obviously they're keeping 
more to the source material with it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and little tweaks like the fact that like not the episode, but the episode before you were talking about where he he has the contest uh, with Satan um, or Lucifer. That is actually different because in the in the comic he goes he he does that contest up against the actual demon who has the helm. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, and they just wanted to give Lucifer more of a spotlight in it because, um, well, I don't think they're going to do a Lucifer show uh, because they already have one. Right. Um, but yeah, so I think that was that was that was a pretty cool aspect and the fact that like she gets defeated in her own realm by this guy actually leads more to uh, if, if, and when they get to it, uh, uh, Lucifer actually leaving hell um, is because they, she, whatever you want to call it um, feels like they don't, they're not needed there as much. And like, you know what? Fuck this, this thing. I don't need to, I don't need to fall in your nonsense anymore. And just fucking basically packs, it, sends everybody out, just shoes everybody out of hell, locks the gate, and says, "Hey, when uh when douchebag shows back up, give him the keys. It's his. I don't I don't want it anymore." Which, by the way, when they show, uh, what's her name, his love interest, brutal. You know that brutal, brutal. But I was kind of excited because I was like, "Are we, are we going to do that side story eventually? Are we going to do the the uh, uh, key to hell I mean, side story?" It's like it, it's technically uh, it is would be season two at this point. I was so excited by that. I was like, oh, I can't like it. It's so awesome that they they've already hinted at that, and I hope that they follow through with it. Yeah, be so awesome. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Everything was it was so well done, and uh, the uh, the guy playing John is so fucking creepy in and of himself when he's uh, like explaining himself to the to what's her name as as uh he's given she's given him a ride to uh to the uh to the diner to begin with well to the, or no well, to is to to get the ruby yeah but yeah it's just like god he's so fucking creepy and 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 scary um and the effects that they used to with the talisman that uh Oh, the that he got from his mom perfect, to just yeah, incinerate protection. people was disgusting. Yeah, yeah. It's been such. It's been so well done. Like without having to watch more Paper Girls, uh, I think it right now is one of my favorite shows on on television right now. Yeah, it's fantastically done. Um, I've been trying to pace myself and and not finish the last two episodes. Um, and plus work has been busy and haven't been really come home to do it, but. Uh, I tend to watch them this weekend, but uh, I can't wait for you to watch episode six because it is twofold one of the best, like uh, two storylines that happen to be tied together that are some of the best, uh, like, adapted material I've seen in a long time. It has mm-hmm. to do with uh, episode six is all about death. Um, which should be the next episode that I'm on. Yeah. It should be because it follows right after that one, which makes sense because, like, all the death that happens in that and then it goes forward um but there's a there's a couple of parts in that they're really good but the two storylines are the part with death and then uh is actually a uh a flashback sequence literally uh to um a deal with between dream and death uh, a certain gentleman they meet in a bar if you remember that storyline i do remember that storyline very well done. I'm, I'm glad. So they're they are bringing those elements into it that's fucking awesome yeah uh i was gonna say too that uh by the way, Joanna Constantine, can I get a hell, can we get a Hellraiser Joanna Constantine? They want to. They want to do a spinoff with that, with her with Jenna. That's fantastic. Yeah, I didn't realize. I I know we've been over the casting of who was going to in this, but be in this, but until like seeing her there, I was like, oh shit, that's uh doc, Doctor Who uh girl. I can't remember uh, Clara, right from yeah. Doctor Who. Yeah, I believe it's Clara. Yeah, yeah, and like that's awesome. They got her playing Joanne Constantine and does it so fucking well so i want to see uh a hellraiser uh joanna constantine i think that'd be so fucking awesome yeah uh because they do the effects for the demons so well yeah dude, he reaches, the, dude, when he reaches okay, out dude is anybody gonna address that that international soccer player is now just a fucking puddle of of goo on the floor no it's fine the the the, the crown will wipe it away the crown will wipe it away yeah, yeah no exactly deal. no big deal 
the hand that just comes out and splits this dude in two. And I was like, well, he's dead and no one seems to care. Whatever, I guess. Yeah, he's just a soccer player. It's fine. Or football yeah. player, whatever you want to call him. But I was like, well, that's that's awesome. I want to see a Hellraiser uh, or Hellblazer. Hellraiser. Hell Hellblazer. Blazer. Yeah. Hellblazer. Uh, Joanna Constantine. Yeah, they set it up too because they they give you the flashbacks of her uh, of her traumatic incident. Yeah, um, the little girl. And then obviously with her her ex, um, which is done masterfully well uh, in the in the whole apartment scene, uh, getting the sand back. Um, which is another thing that people were like, oh, they changed it. I'm like, mm, yeah, but it seems more um, dramatic this way than it was in the visually. Visually different in the comic book would be differently in here because when you walk in uh, to the in the episode when, when Joanna walks in, it seems normal. Right. It's not until Dream realizes it and breaks the hold of the sand on her uh, which obviously, if you pay attention, would have done the same thing he did to her, the, her ex-girlfriend or ex-whatever you want to call her, ex-lover. Uh, but in the comic book, when they get there, the house is overrun with living nightmares. Yeah. Um. So it's a little differently. It's more, again, more visually appealing than it is visually, uh, and then it is story-wise. So I actually kind of like that uh, that change. Um, I did too, because I, I was expecting that as well. Like we're trying to remember the comic books while watching this. It's just like okay. You know, I remember like there was something weird about the house. Like, yeah, she's she gets in a trance in there because of the sand, but when she comes out of the trance, it's like, uh, it, it like the walls were like supposed to be weird looking, and there's supposed to be something weird. Like, I couldn't remember exactly what was going on, but I know that there was supposed to be something different about the environment when she snapped out of things because of the sand and its effect on the real world. Yep. Um, but I like that they kind of subverted those expectations, like. You know, no, everything is still relatively normal, except her, her ex in yeah. there. Yeah. And when you when you come when she comes out of it, you see like the 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 apartment is is run down and dirty. Mm-hmm. Um, but you obviously open the the bedroom door and you see this masticated body. You're like, that's not good. No, not good at all. Yeah, not good at all. Yeah, yeah, it was it was, it was really cool. Um, and then uh, the. I think you'll really enjoy the, uh, well, actually, I don't even know if you'll remember the twist in this one versus the comic book. You probably won't, but you'll enjoy it, I think, when you get to it, because there's a big twist coming up that you're going to get after episode seven. Okay. Is it seven? I can't remember. I only have nine and ten left, so uh, I'm trying to remember which which happen in right. seven versus eight but um and uh i'll just let you know i'm gonna say this right now i read a slight spoiler not that it's a spoiler because i know how the sh- right you've the story read the goes. comics multiple times um but there is uh i don't know if it'll piss you off or just make you fucking kind of angry like it's probably gonna make me is they do leave it on somewhat of a cliffhanger as long as i'm getting a season two yeah I'll be okay with it. Yeah. Hope, hopefully. Knock on wood. They haven't announced a season two yet. But considering that for, what was it, 10? Was it 10? No, it hasn't even been out 10 weeks. No, uh, it's been out for two weeks. It's been out for two weeks. It was the number one most streamed show on Netflix. Maybe it was 10 days. For 10 days straight. Yeah, probably. Only being dethroned a day or two ago uh, from re- release of this episode, uh, like three or four days ago, um, by some teen, teen, something or other. So basically, what I mean is that it 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 was one of the most watched shows on Netflix up until for for ten days straight. So with it being so goddamn popular, you would hope that they'd be rushing to uh, to secure a season two of it. Hopefully, man. Uh, like I said, I haven't seen anything. I was looking right now to see if it announced anything, but um, yeah, nothing I see yet about a season two. Uh, but they need to do it because the show is fantastic and um, everybody in it is amazing. Yep. Uh, and Despair wears Crocs. Really? Yep. Everybody wearing 
Crocs open here. So if you, that was him at the end of uh, episode six, right? That was Desire at the end of episode. That six. was Desire. Sorry, yeah. that was Desire. Her, okay. He, they, their twin or counterpart is Despair. Um, yeah. And uh, in the comic book, they are uh, shown as a, a female-ish body, very fat and obese, uh, covered in like bed sores and, and unkept and has rats and shit chewing on them. Um, in this one, I saw a picture. Uh, uh, actually, I think the teaser trailer that pop plays when you f- go to Netflix on the app uh, actually shows her, and she's just a, a larger uh, lady with unkept everything. She looks dirty and gross, but you see she's wearing Crocs. It cracks me up. Because, uh, you know, despair. Where's Crocs? Yeah, because that's a thing, right? Yup. Yup. But, uh, yeah, no, that's about, I think that's really all I have. Like I said, n- nothing really happening this week. Um, so, you know, hopefully next week we'll have more to talk about. Hopefully. At least we'll have more episodes of at least the Sandman watch. Yep. Uh, once I finish the Sandman, I'll start going through Paper Girls again. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to watch that new Jamie Foxx vampire movie, though. On, uh, oh, yeah? on Netflix. So it's, uh, it's, a like, a, a, a action horror comedy thing or whatever it's horror because it has blood and violence in it but uh it it looks like it may may not be a great movie but it's it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun um has a a snoop dog as a vampire hunter okay and dave franco as a something in it that has to do with it too but um it's akin to like that power uh the movie he did where it's like about the superheroes you know it's kind of like a real world ish type setup but like his Jamie Foxx's whole job is literally just vampire hunter. Um, that's pretty cool. So but Jamie Foxx is a vampire hunter would be, would be pretty cool. Yeah. Especially so. if it's a little bit funny. Uh speaking of things that we want to to watch though, um yes. there is one more thing that I did uh read this week. Uh it is that the first two episodes of the Lord of the Rings Ring of Power. The Rings, Ring of Power. The Rings of Power, yeah. Rings of Power are set to be released on September 1st. Oh, is it first? I thought it was like the second week of September. Or is that something no, else? I'm pretty sure that uh, it wasn't uh, through Apple Apple News that I read that. Uh, it was when we actually did have internet, uh, some internet up at work, and I was reading through the news because when you don't have Ethernet to do anything else, yeah. that's basically all you can do. Uh yeah, I believe it said September 1st, the first two episodes will be out. Well, that's exciting. Third of, that's not of, <laughs> the rings. Where is the, there it is. Yep, yep, September 1st. The Shadow of the Past in episode two does not have a uh, title yet. Which is weird because it's supposed to be the first two episodes, but whatever. Yeah, it's weird too. I don't know. Um, it did, it. I don't know. It's uh, that show. When I first heard read about it, I was like, mm, I don't know about this show. Uh, and as these trailers came out, um, I'm like, no, 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 I'm, I'm in. I really want to watch these and see what they do. They do because it gets. I thought they were going more of like we're gonna do our own thing, but they are, but they aren't. Like they're using a lot of like obviously like you know talking about the. It's because it's all past stuff. It's all stuff that happens before both the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings years before uh, both of those uh, happened. So if you haven't, I would suggest like uh, reading some of the articles about it, uh, about what the story is going, going to be in general. Uh, Because if I recall, right, there's some really weird stuff that was happening behind the scenes. First off, I didn't know that the Tolkien estate didn't like Peter Jackson's, at least the Hobbit movies. Yeah, they did not. So when it came to making the TV series and Amazon was literally like, hey, Peter Jackson, you've done these movies. How about you get involved in this type of stuff? And it was Tolkien's estate that was like, no, no, no. If if you want to attach him to this, we're not doing business with you at all. And yeah. it's like, wow, that was, that's a little harsh, but okay. So that's why Peter Jackson was never involved in it. Like, I, I guess he was, he wanted to do it, but, and Amazon wanted him involved in it, but the, the Tolkien estate was like, no, 
no, you're you're not you're mm-hmm. not going to be involved in this. It's like okay, that that's cool. Uh, but then with regards to like the the story of the past, apparently there's and I I would have to go look up the article wherever I read it. Uh, there were only certain things that they could cover in the show. Other things were off limits for what they could include, like certain characters or certain storylines. I'm like, that's really weird to have that type of stipulation in it. Yeah, it's very strange. Yeah. Hmm. Well, interesting. We'll check it out. I, I still think it looks awesome. I think oh, they, it they, looks they, awesome. I will watch it at least the first couple of episodes and then and finish it as I as I do uh, finish things, you know, slowly over time. But uh, does how long are the episodes? Do you know? Um, they they say they should be hour an hour long. Uh, I don't know if this actually says runtime on here or not because I haven't seen anything about runtime. I don't know if you have. No, they know they they said it was uh, supposed to be long form. Uh, which usually means an hour. Okay. So, yeah, um, something specifically that I'll watch, like, an episode of, and then a week later watch another episode of. I mean, I guess they they are releasing it uh, uh, serially or weekly. Yeah. So I'll have to watch it one episode at a time anyway. Other than the first two, you get them both at the same time. Yeah, even though I'll still probably watch one because it's an hour long and it's a very big time investment to make, you know. A gra- yeah. I, I can watch four 15-minute YouTube videos and ignore those, or I could watch one. <laughs> one one uh, show and try and be and be invested in it. You know, give or take. Yeah. You know, it's a give and take, you know. Let's see. Uh, mindfully watch something and absorb all of it, or... Use that same amount of time to ignore whatever content some person has made on their own free time for your entertainment. Uh, exactly. So, yeah, you know, whichever way. Yeah, exactly. It just depends how the depression is hitting that day. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That, that works. That makes perfect sense. Anywho. Uh, Speaking I believe... of sad things, this episode <laughs> must come to an end. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, this has been Comes Naturally. We have been... Joe. I've been Cody, and as usual, you fuckers just came naturally. Bye.